hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the fourth module of unix and it has uh, three topics the first one is about the group ids and the user ids the second is about the ipc which is interprocess communication and finally we have the shared memory okay and if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel okay and after the discussion of the topics we'll be uh, discussing the uh, previous questions so let's get started with the first topic which is the user id and the group ids Sometimes you want to change the user ID and the group ID permissions to access some files. So how can we do that? Before that, uh, let's see the different types of IDs. The real user ID, effective user ID and saved user ID. Okay. This is set by the login system. This is set when execution of the program happens and this is copied from the effective user ID. Okay. So this is a copy of the effective user ID. So when we have these three types of IDs, we can use some functions like set a GID, uh, get GID or set UID, get, uh, get UID functions to set and get the group IDs and user IDs. So here we have the super user who is like uh, the owner of the file and the, the that user can perform the operations like uh, set and get the different types of IDs okay on these three uh, types of IDs. So by that we can change the um, permissions for the user and the group IDs okay. And um, when we want to interpret some file we have to uh, write the command uh, in this form we have to use the exclamation mark and the path name and if you have some uh, optional arguments here we'll be including here this type of uh, command line um, indicates that it's an interpreter file okay the file which is having the commands to interpret other files okay and what is the system function it's just a function which is um, checking if the other functions are um, like valid functions on an operating system or not okay and if you want to get the summary of what all the resources used and how much time uh, each process took, we can use the process accounting. Okay, and this has uh, this has uh, some flags here to get the different types of um, data. Okay, and user identification means any process can identify if it's a real or effective user by uh, checking the uh, UID and GID of the uh, user. Okay. So there are three types of users, real user ID, effective user ID and group user ID. So whenever a process wants to check any of these, it can call the appropriate functions to get the uh, type of ID it uh, uses. Okay. And process time is nothing but how much time the process of the CPU is used for the user time and for the system time. And if it's for the uh, terminated uh, process, we can use these type of functions. Okay. And next uh, we have the IO redirection. That means we are setting where uh, the input comes from and where input goes to. Okay, that is known as IO redirection. And the next topic is the overview of IPC methods. IPC is inter uh, interprocess communication. Okay, that is used to share data among multiple process without interfering with one another. Okay, so some of the uh, features are the following, which are like half duplex, full duplex, and message queues, which we'll be discussing in the upcoming topics. Okay. And here we have the pipes. Pipes is uh, used for transferring the data without using any temporary space. Like we'll be using a buffer here. There are two types: the half duplex and full duplex. In half duplex, only one from one part to another part of the system it can be transferred. In full duplex, two-way transfer will be there. Okay, so it's uh, something like this. We have a pipe here, which is a, a temporary buffer, and the data will be read from FD of zero to, and it will be returned to FD of one. Okay. And we have p open and p close functions. It just makes the automation more faster. Okay, like uh, the process of creating a pipe, forking a child, closing the unused ends of the pipe, and so on. Okay, this will automate the process. These are the syntax for file open and uh, file close. Okay, and coprocess means if it handles both of the input and output operations, that uh, that's known as coprocess. So here's the diagram. We have the FD1 and FD0. It's using the pipe to write and read the functions. Okay. And FIFOS is nothing but another name of the pipe. It has a special file inside the memory by using which we can implement the features of pipe. Okay. And this is the function to open the pipe, uh, open the FIFO. And we have the uh, main users like uh, client server uh, communication here by using FIFO and also the duplication of the file through the uh, FIFO program. Okay. Moving on, we have the XSI IPC, which is basically the identifier for IPC. IPC is nothing but a file and it has the message queues, semaphore or shared memory segment and the user ID of that is nothing but the X, uh, XSI IPC. Okay. So it saves that as and it acts as an identifier and the ways to create the IPC structure are three. Yeah, either we can use the uh, private key, the client and the server can agree on a key or on a path name. Okay. These are the three ways to create and this is the structure which uh, it is. This is the structure of XSI uh, IPC 
which is having the UID, GID and uh, CUID and CGID. Okay, we can specify the mode also. What are the advantages of XPIC? It's organized and it's uh, storage efficient and the disadvantage include that it doesn't clear the uh, memory automatically in case of a, like in case of a pipe. So there's a wastage of memory and it uh, doesn't have the file descriptors and the file names. Okay, so it's hard to handle the XSI. Okay, and the message queues are nothing but uh, what all messages uh, we have to perform like the operations we have to perform. So it stores a list of messages in the kernel and the new messages are added, uh, the new messages are added to the end of the queue. Some of the um, modes of the um, messages are like permission, uh, queue number, bytes, size, IDs, time and all okay. So these are the um, different constants used for identifying the message okay. And basically the message has two things the ID which is a long integer and the data which is the actual command which we have to perform okay. And semaphores is the uh, variables like it has a 0 or 1 stored in it. So either the semaphore can uh, like a semaphore is used for mainly for synchronization. So what happens is if there is a file here and multiple users and uh, if you want to make sure that at a time only one user should uh, access the file we can use a semaphore. Like when a uh, user is using the file the semaphore value will become 1 and other users cannot be using the file. They can use only when uh, the semaphore, uh, semaphore value is 0 ok. So when this uh, user exits the file the semaphore value will become 0 and other user will be able to access this uh, access the file ok. And they also have the similar methods and the modes and the struct values like uh, get all set all set value and to get uh, more information about uh, this one you can check the notes ok. So in this video I am just giving you a basic information of what the thing is and for the more information you can uh, refer to google or any other books ok. The next topic which we have is the shared memory. Shared memory means uh, two process sharing the same uh, part of the um, storage ok. So uh, what is the advantage is that um, there is more efficiency in uh, story, uh, sharing the memory because it does not create um, same uh, duplicate files in the memory. So uh, kernel also helps in that it, cre uh, it keeps the track of all the shared memory regions and it has the some of the entry table uh, identities like um, name, user id and group id, owner id, read write access permission and timestamps ok. This is the diagram of the kernel uh, data structure for the memory here we have the shared memory table and the shared memory region between two process and this is the process table ok. So kernel handles the um, shared memory effectively ok. So data fields are like permission, size, LP id and time and the APIs are used to open shared memory, deattach or control operation ok. And some of the properties of the client server are like uh, they are separate and they are performed on same or different machines. They have internal information which can be exchanged and they have this, uh, they have their own set of rules and they have their uh, communication peer to peer ok. And they can use FIFO or message queues ok. And stream pipes is uh, uh, same as a pipe but it is bidirectional and it is uh, used to read the data from one part and write to another part ok. And if you use for parent to child we have uh, one. Um, incoming and many outgoing process ok. And the advantage is that it uh, does not possess the risk of being overwritten and it also allows the distributed transaction ok. And the disadvantage includes that it is uh, comparative, uh, comparatively slower than the other pipes and it is not available on all the platforms ok. And sometimes you want to pass uh, the same file to the other process because it, uh, because it is also performing the same task. So at that time we can pass the file descriptor which has the information of the file and it has to be performed using it has to be transferred using the same pipe only ok. So these are two uh, key points which you need to keep in mind and if you want to develop a program which uh, reads the data and executes it we can do that by using an open server program and it is executed by um, executing the process uh, like uh, open or more files. And mainly what happens is that the client sends the request across a pipe and the server sends back the open descriptor ok. And if we have to um, <coughs> do the communication between the client and the server first the connection needs to be made. There are few functions like there are three functions for that uh, purpose. So uh, let us uh, discuss that. First the server listens for the client connection and, and once the server has called the server listen it will wait for the client connection to arrive and when that happens it uh, does connect to the server and the new stream pipe is automatically created and the new descriptor is returned ok. So this all what uh, basically is in the module 4 of Unix. Now let us uh, discuss the previous year questions. In the previous year uh, questions due to different schemes the thing is that uh, most of the questions are from the module 3. So I have discussed these questions in module 3 in depth so you can refer to that video. Things like uh, any questions are there like uh, from module 4. 
So uh, these questions which are I have marked here like uh, mostly repeated types are all discussed in uh, great depth in the module 3 video so you can uh, refer to those uh, videos I have put the timestamps also so you can go to that particular topic also okay so yeah that's uh, pretty much about the module 4 and thank you for watching and see you in the next one.